Hi guys, welcome back to Beauty and Rarity with Shade. Um, I just noticed that I had uploaded or recorded a video rather that is supposed to be uploaded and I didn't have an intro for it and then I got dirty, had to take that whole ensemble off and put this one on but I did remember what I did with my face so it's going to be a voiceover get ready with me or face of the day type of um, video. Uh, I didn't record because I was listening to music and I didn't want to have a YouTube um, stop me for copyright issues or whatever the case may be. But I did film this look um, which is like a fall inspired um, pumpkin spice and everything nice type of look. I've been really feeling it. The video I just show three different lip combinations you can wear with something like this. It's a very very pretty coppery golden eye um, light smoky I guess with this lip which is just a lip liner that I love. Um, I did do it with a, like, a really, really dark brown color, and then I did it with an orange color. So that you can get variations with this kind of eye look. You can do a lot of different um, lip looks with it. I think it's a beautiful look, especially for fall. So it's been something that I wanted to film. And it does look really, really good with my light brown hair at the moment. But again, so this is just my intro for that video. If you're interested in watching this face, Keep watching, um, hit the bell button so that you are notified. Whenever I do upload, I'm going to try to upload more frequently. And also subscribe, be a part of the Beauty and Rarity gang. Um, you're a rare beauty. Just definitely um, hit that subscribe button and bell button so that you can continuously be a part of my family. Um, yes, again, if you're interested, watch my videos, watch my previous videos, watch my beauty and baby videos so that you can get a, a look at my daughter. I'm definitely going to post more videos with her. But yes, thank you guys for watching. Bye. So as you can see here, I'm just saying hello again. And then I'm going to start actually applying the makeup. You see here I have the trusty Dior mirror that I always use in all my videos. I was just cleaning that off before I started. And then I'm going to take the Snip and Fab Viper Venom Micro, Micro Blur um, Primer. And I'm just going to put that on my face. It's supposed to diminish um, any large pores. And just um, to have like a smooth application for your makeup. So that's what I'm doing here. Same concept. I don't know why I decided to use two. I think this one I just wanted to more focus on my T-zone area. I have really, really large pores on my nose. And my nose gets very, very, very oily throughout the day. So that's what I'm doing here. This is the Smashbox Photo Op Brightening. It's like a brightening effect. Uh, it's, not, it's like a light con concealer. I don't really know what this is. It's like a brightening serum concealer that I just put underneath my eyes to brighten them up before my makeup application. I got this as a sample and I never really use it. And um, for this look, I just wanted to use it, I guess. Maybe I just need to get rid of things. and I didn't know what I was using this day. And um, I'm just playing on my iPhone, trying to decide what music I want to listen to. I think this day I was listening to the new Tory Lanez album. You gotta get some more subscribers so that you guys can listen to what I'm listening to and it won't be a copyright issue. So I'm just pet petting that Smashbox um, brightening thing underneath my eyes. And as you can see, it did wake my eyes up a bit. My camera shut off, but I'm just coming back just to show you that my next step is my brows. And I usually use the Wet n Well brow definer. I really really do like that. I feel like it is a very dupable um, product to the Anastasia one. It has a spoolie on one end and then it has the um, the liner on the other. I guess it's almost like comparable to the definer, the Anastasia definer. But it's like waxy and it, it does the job. My brows stay on all day. So I really do like this. And I usually just outline my natural outline. These This day my brows was recently done. I get them threaded. And then on, on the other eyebrow I do have a um, scar. So that's why it has like the slash. It's not for style guys. That's how my brow naturally is. Because... 
I got into an accident when I was a baby. Don't be alarmed. They're really not that dark. I don't know why I look so dark on camera. But I used to just outline my natural line of my natural brows. And then I um, put on Girl Boy Brow Set by MAC. And that is like a light brown color and it just matches my hair. And even when I was really dark, I still did that, that brow set because I really do love that one. But nothing fancy smancy here. I do my brows the same every day. I try to leave them at least a little natural looking. I'm not really into those um, very, very, very square brows or faded brows or any kind of trendy Instagram brows, I guess. But here you go. I'm just taking that spoolie on the other end and, you know, just going through the brow. And that's the brow set I was just speaking of. I'm just going to put that over top. And that will complete that. And you can kind of see on this camera that it is showing light brown. I, I really do love this set if you're interested or if you're blonde like myself or light brown hair color. Even if you're like um copper, I feel like this set is perfect. Okay, so I guess this day I decided to do my eyes first. In no particular order, um, sometimes I do my eyes first and then I do my foundation. Sometimes I do my foundation and then I go on my eyes. But there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's all preference. I do suggest if you are using glitters or any kind of pigments that have fallout, you should do the eyes first because then it's, you know, not so, so much. It's not going to actually stain your, your foundation or make it look like raccoon eyes or it's not going to fall on your face and then you know it's less messy I guess and it's an easier application for your foundation. So I am just using this wet and wild concealer to actually conceal out my eyes and to use as a base. You can also use eyeshadow primer. Again I'm not very particular or picky with primers either on my face or eyes. Um, I don't feel like investing in money for those things. So, and I'm just using my fingers to spread out that product before I actually go ahead and start applying the shadow itself. This is the Wet n Wild Eyebrow Definer Pencil. And it is like really, really stark white, or actually it's real, it's actually pinkish. Um, don't be alarmed. Once you blend, blend, blend that out, it'll just, you know, seamlessly melt and you'll have like a highlighted look without having to put any, you know, white or shimmery shadows underneath the brow. But if you choose to do so, that is your business. See here? You don't really see it. It's not so bad. So here I am just blending out that harsh line of that white um, brightener and that's what I'm going to be doing here for a few moments just so that it's, so, it's not so stark and white since I'm very tan. And then I'm now just looking for what I'm going to do next which would be take this MAC brown eyeshadow as a transition color and I'm gonna put that in my crease area I think that is uh, you know what I don't know what shadow that is by Mac but it's one of their most popular 
or more popular crease color, I'm pretty sure. So what I'm doing is taking a fluffy brush by MAC and I'm just going to pop that color into the crease area and just going to allow the other colors to blend nicely. So that is what I'm doing here. You do a nice circular motions and then you sweep it across your eyelid. Make sure both sides are evenly distributed. Uh, you don't want one with more pigment than the other. So that's what I'm doing and I'm showing you here. That's how it should look. Okay, it looks like I'm finally finished putting on that transition crease color. Maybe not. The key again is to make sure it's well blended and evenly distributed on both sides. Okay, maybe now I'm done. So the next color I'm still debating on what I was going to do this day. I did take, I think that is the Huda beauty palette <clears throat> and I'm taking that burnt orange shade which is a little bit more rich than that transition shade that I put on because it's an orange copper look I was still playing with um, colors to see which would be best so I put that orange coppery shade um, by the Huda Beauty um, right underneath that transition color so exactly in the V area of your eyes and I did bring it all the way across just to build up my crease area. So it gives you a nice like light smoky effect on with those two shades. And brown and orange, they, they just counteract so nice together. But that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just blowing off the fallout that came on the lid. I mean on the palette. So then I said to take that darker brown shade that was in the corner there. And I'm just going to pop that right onto the outer V. Um, I'm not going to sweep that all the way in, just on the outer V to get that more dark smoky look. Do that again to the other side so that they're even. And you just keep playing with it. You'll keep adding, you know, the orange if need be, the brown, and then the darker brown in the outermost um, V of your eyelid to create the smoky look. I'm just going to keep building up those eyeshadows and then you see here I took that fluffy MAC brush, went back into the transition area. And now I'm contemplating my next step. I did take this MAC pigment, I think it's Blonde's Gold Pigment, I did get it in one of their um, Holiday sets, it came with like four smaller pigments, and the smaller pigments are way better because you never use all of a MAC pigment. I have so many that have so much product left and I use it a lot, but because they're just so packed and a little goes a long way, you'll never use this product all the way up. So here I'm taking the NYX Glitter Adhesive, and I'm putting it on my lid. Everywhere that I don't have any shadow, it's hard to determine here, but I don't have anything like right in the center of my lid. So that's what I did there. So I poured a little bit of the pigment on that palette <clears throat> because again this can be messy and it goes a, like a little goes a long way I picked up a little bit on this flat shader brush and I honestly focused this on 
the um, inner of my eyes and I drag it like a like I guess to the middle of my lid so inner eyes to the middle of your lid and this is just gonna give me a pop in the middle this color is very very pretty And again, at this point, I was really, really just playing with these shadows, but it did come out perfect. So, yes, if you have like a light gold color, put it in the middle of your, I mean, in the, um, put it right where I put mine. So you, it can just pop a little bit more. So I'm just fanning that out or blending it outward. And that's what it'll look like there. And then uh, my next step would be to add the pumpkin or copper, copper orangey color that's going to make this pumpkin spice and everything nice look come together. So I did start by using the Stila, um, I don't even know what the shadow is called, but it's one that comes with like a mixing medium and it's this product here. But this product is very difficult to work with. I did have it for a while and it was... Um, very stiff and not movable but it did have this glitter effect to it that's why I wanted to put it on my lid but then you're gonna notice that I went in with another color as well because it wasn't giving me that effect that I actually needed for this look but I did use the same palette I put a mixing medium down and then I try to get some product out of that pot for that Stila and then I put it on a even more stiff flat shader brush but again i mean it came out nice but i still needed some more dramatic flair to it so you'll see after this that i put something else over top see that's why i made that face i said you know this didn't come out the way that i want it but we're just going to wing it here I went into this old MAC palette that I had and I took this even more coppery orange color that's way more pigmented and I put that all over my lid and then I'm going to go ahead and put that Stila color over top of this so that it has like a little sparkle onto this orange MAC color. So that is what I was going for initially. So again guys, just play with your makeup. If it doesn't look right, you do not have to start over again. Just keep playing with it. I promise that it'll come out the way that you initially planned for it to come out. And that's what I'm doing here. You know, makeup is fun, so just have fun with it. So you see I put it a little bit over top of that blonde gold pigment and I dragged it outward so that it's on my whole eyelid but it's not covering all those crease colors and outer V colors so I have a smokier pumpkin spice look. And here again I did show that I'm going to go right back into that Stila product and put it over top because these like have big flaky um, glitters. That is just going to make that color even pop even more and stand out and just give it the effect that I initially was going for. So you see, I'm going to go back into the colors that I went for before, just to put those colors back. Whatever color or pigment I did lose from doing the lid color, I'm just going to place back into the crease in outer V, so that I'm still getting that smoky effect, and it just didn't turn into an orange look. So that's what I'm doing here, 
and if you didn't lose any colors, kudos to you. You don't have to do this step. Please skip it. Again, make it work for you and your eyes and whatever you're going for. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to the face and place my foundation. I took both a LAN comb and a NARS foundation and I mixed the two. Um, because I, I like the consistency of both of them and even the colors. One was too light and one was too dark. So I did that. But first I put on this MAC strobe lotion. And I have I do have combination oily skin, um, but I feel like these strobe lotions just have my skin looking a little bit more healthy and not so dull, especially in these cold winter months of Connecticut. So I'm just showing you how my skin now has like this nice um, glow effect, and it's very smooth. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place the foundation on the back of my hand and apply it to my face. I'm just going to dot the product on and then I'm going to buff it out and get the desired coverage that I'm looking for. So that's what I'm going to do here. I don't have problematic skin, um, but I do have some blemishes, I have a lot of moles and a little bit of freckles. Um, and then sometimes I just like to look a little bit more tan because I do get washed out in the winter time. And again, my skin gets, gets dull and I get a little bit pale. So and my body always stays naturally darker and that's how it's been forever. So I love when my face just matches my body and just has um, like one nice rich tan skin tone so that's what I normally go for um, I don't really need it for coverage as I again I don't really have problematic skin I don't have any acne scarring or anything of the such but again um, use what's best for you if you don't need foundation and none of us do we need to let our skin breathe you don't have to use foundation but this day I wanted a full full cover so you see me going back into the foundation for another layer but I could have just left it as it is because I did get coverage and again I'm not covering much so but again do what works best for you so I'm just going to do the same technique that I did before I'm just dabbing on my face and then I'm going to use the same brush and buff it in and it looks like I just focus on the t-zone area just to give more coverage there or you know in the center of my face and then buff it outward Now I'm taking this Wet n Wild concealer and I'm going to put it underneath the eyes, down the bridge of my nose, um, forehead, cupid's bow, and a little bit on my chin just to brighten up the center of my face in any dark circles or bags that I may have. Um, I am lucky genetics are on my side for this. I don't really get bags or dark circles, um, but it just awakens the face and it just will bright give that brighten effect so your face is not just one flat color um i guess that's the best way to put it i just like the way that it looks so i'm taking a um i think this is the real technique so this might be a beauty blender brush um sponge and i'm just going to blend that in
There you go. When I come closer, you can actually see it. And I think now here I'm looking for my setting powder, which I used the J Cat Banana Powder. That I you can get from Ulta. Um, I'm not really particular with setting powders. Anything banana color or even lighter I would go for. For this day, I just used that one for that, you know, it was just not a preference thing. This is not one of my favorites, but it does do the job. So I just gonna, I'm just gonna place that everywhere that I put that concealer and I use the same sponge. Okay. And I'm not gonna like harshly bake, so this is like a light bake here. Just to set that concealer in place. Okay, now that you look like a warrior, we're gonna move on to the next step. I'm just taking a white, uh, wet wipe here. Cleaning out myself, I had a satin shirt and all that banana powder residue got on it and it got on the table as well. Makeup is messy, so it's expected. I'm taking this Too Faced Chocolate, I think it's the chocolate um, setting powder and I'm going to set everywhere else that doesn't have the banana powder. And again, you don't have to put a setting powder on your face, but if you're oily like me and you use a liquid foundation, it's highly suggested that you do. And again, that's why I said it's a light bake because I'm going to go ahead now and just sweep all of that powder off of my face. It was on there long enough for me. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to just set my entire face and sweep off that banana powder. Now that my face is fully matte. I'm going to go ahead and bronze, and I'm using this Wet n Wild bronzer that I got from Walgreens. And I'm going to lightly, it looks like I'm going to try to carve up my face, but I'm not really. This is just how I bronze it up. I'm going to bronze up the hollows of my cheeks, my forehead, a little bit on my nose. I think I did my chin today, or I'm sorry, on this video, should I say? So just browns it up. You don't have to um, do like hardcore um, sculpting, but just the bronze and bring color back into your face because once sometimes when you put like powder foundation on and you um, set the face, it's going to look a little flat um, and I don't like that. So I'm just going to bring some color back into my face a little bit and it just makes you look a little bit more sun kissed. So that's what I'm doing here. So I went into another bronzer, the Terracotta by Guerlain, because the Wet n Wild just wasn't doing it for me this day. <coughs> Excuse me. And this bronzer has like a little um, red undertone to it, so it's going to give me even more color. Now I'm taking some blush to the apples of my cheek, and I believe this is MAC Warm Soul. It's one of their mineralized blushes, and it's a fan favorite. I'm just going to pop that on the apples of my cheek. You know, you just do a light smiling method, sweep it backwards. And the mineralized blushes do have like um, a nice shimmery effect, so you don't necessarily have to put a highlight on on top of that however of course because I love highlight I will I'm gonna take the big fluffy brush and blend the bronzer and the blush a little bit together so that it's not so harsh on my face take another wet wipe and cleaning off my lips I'm also gonna put on a cream highlight and then I'm gonna put a powder highlight on top and that's just for a extra effect 
So I took this soft, bouncy um, cream highlight by Physicians Formula. It's the gold one. Putting that on the bridge of my nose, the highest point of my cheekbones, and Cupid's bow. Um, and I believe I put some above my eyebrows, um, but if not, I normally do. And then once that product is set, I'm going to go ahead and put a powdered highlight on top of everywhere I put that cream highlight. You do not have to put two highlights on. Again, um, I love highlight, so I'm always over highlighted. This day I took the Pat McGrath, um, Pat McGrath highlight. Um, I got the slashers. It was the golden one. It came in the package with the glitter and the lip, the lipstick. I don't know. I don't know what it came with, but it was the, the golden one. It's like gold 001 or something of that nature, and I got it last year. And it's very, very pretty. And again, blend, blend, blend. You're not... You're not sweeping the product off, but you're just blending it so it's not so line after line after line. So this is where I decided that I was going to try several different looks, I think. Or maybe I'm doing my lashes. I have no idea. Okay, so I'm going to try several different lipstick looks for, for you. I went in first with this orange lipstick. I think this is by um, Kat Von D. And you see my baby pop up? She woke up. So, um, you can do this lip look with this. Keep it very monochromatic orange, and it did work. This is very pretty. Okay, so I put that lip look on, and then I went back to my lashes. I'm going to put this um, mascara on. My mascara had like my hair in it, so gross, excuse that, um, but I use the Essence um, mascaras from Ulta, they work very well and they're very affordable. As you can see I use this a lot so I need to re-up on another wand and another product because this one is done. But I'm just putting the mascara on the upper and lower lashes and then I'm going to take the 614 um, from Salon Perfect I think they're 614 or 15 they're my favorite lashes and I'm going to pop that on I pop them on. And I'm taking this dual glue. I never use tweezers, but if tweezers work for you and that's how you apply your lashes, please do so. I just use my fingers, especially when I don't have nails on. It's very easy for me to do. These lashes are very easily easy to apply. That's why I love getting them from Walmart. They're like $8.88. And anytime I'm at Walmart, I make sure to pick up a pack. So that's what I'm doing here.
Okay, so now that my lashes are on, anytime I feel like, um, anytime I put lashes on, I feel like the look just comes together so perfectly. But I'm going back into the same crease in outer V colors, and I'm just going to smoke out the um, lower lid or a lower lash line, should I say. There's no lower lid. Perfect. It just looks so beautiful. I love this look, and I love this color combo so much. But that's what I did there, and I'm just going to make sure that my lashes are stuck, so I'm just... I'm, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just um, pinching the falsies in my real lashes together so that they don't look so notice noticeably fake. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm feeling myself, so I just had to. Alright, and now what I'm going to be doing next, let's see. I decided to put on some black liner on my lower lash line. This is optional. Sometimes I don't wear black liner, but I did this day, and it did come out nice. Okay. So now that's when I was debating on this lip color, which again, I would certainly go out like this. I love orange lips, but I just felt like it was a little bit too, too bright, so I'm going to take it off. Gently do not ruin your foundation or do not have this lip color um, bleed down onto your face because that will be a disaster. So I'm just taking that color off and I'm going to apply the next color that would look nice with this look, which I believe it was a brown. But let's just see here. Okay, so I'm taking this Coffee Bean Liner from Rimmel, and it's my favorite liner, and I'm just going to line my lips. I'm not going to overdraw them, so just line the natural, you know, outline of your lips. I don't overdraw. That's just not something that I do. My lips are naturally, um, I guess they're not big, but they're a perfect size for me, so, and I don't like that look of outdrawn lips. So, I'm just going to go ahead and do that here. And then I'm going to fill it in with this. I think it's like, I think this is So Me. I think this is So Me by MAC. Which is like a mauve brown grayish color. I don't even know how to explain this color here. It's very unique. And I know for sure I didn't like the way this looked, so that came off quick, fast, and in a hurry. I mean, it's a pretty combo. I just didn't like it for this eye look and what I thought I was going to wear as an, um, as an ensemble. But I showed you here. And again, it looks look nice. I just didn't want to wear that. So that's look number two. And see, I'm just looking at both camera and um, screen, and I'm like, no, this isn't it. And I'm going to wipe that off as well. So I'm taking a MAC lipstick, um, I don't know what this is, but it's very brown, and I'm going to line up, oh, I didn't even line it, I put it all over. When I find out what lipstick this is, I will definitely put it down below in the description box, but I'm not sure what this is, but I think this, this is a brown lipstick by MAC. So you can see this is look number three and I think I like this the best so this is what I went with guys. 
Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Stay rare.